Hi, welcome to another training session. I'm Cody, coming from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm going to show you how to install PHP on Windows 10 with Apache installed. First thing we have to do, just like we did with Apache, is find the download for PHP. So I type PHP download in the search field. Click on that first link that came up. Then I want Windows Downloads. So I'll click on Windows Downloads. You'll notice the current version up here is PHP 7. It, there are the 32-bit or 86 architecture. Then there is the, the 64-bit thread safe version. That's the one we want for, the, for this instance. If you have a 32-bit operating system, obviously you're going to want a 32-bit version. I'm going to download the zip file. And I'm going to open it. Similar to how we did with Apache, we want to copy the files into a folder. And you can choose any folder you'd like because we're manually configuring PHP to work. So I'm going to create it right here in the C drive and just say PHP. For security reasons, you might not choose this option, but it's the simplest way to get to that path. Now I paste the files in there. While that, while that, while it's doing that, now earlier today I actually learned a better way to go into system properties. And I just right click on the start menu and then click on system. And then I go to advanced system settings and I want to change the environment variables. I want to change this path. I want to add to it. I want to add the path that I just chose. And we don't need to make everything caps, but I do anyway. There, that's the path to PHP. Because there's a program that PHP uses and it runs on the system. And, we, and the system has to know how to get to that path. So here's your PHP directory. Go into command prompt and just check that PHP is being recognized. Okay, just like before we have an error and it looks like it's associated with the visual C++ libraries. I'm going to go in real quick and search for that error. Alright, so this seems to be a common error already because we were seeing issues. One specifically for PHP 7. No. So what I did was pause the video or the recording of the video for a little bit, a few minutes, just to be able to uh, do a little bit more digging into that error. So actually what I did was I went to Google instead of using the Bing and I typed it in missing. Uh, and then I clicked on the second result that came up. And what it pointed me to was the Visual Studio 2015 RC, whereas for Apache the other day, we installed the 2012. So I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel the error, and download next. Let me install this and I'll get back to the video. Back to the video and the 2015 is installed for Visual Studio. Now to try it out. As you can see it takes you into a shell of sorts where you can type in your commands. So that part is working. Now we need to add it to the Apache to get Apache to work with it.
So in the Apache folder where we put it in, you want the CONF folder for config, that's the configurations. Your httpd.conf CONF is the main configuration for Apache. Basically, Apache uses modules, and we want to add the PHP module. So load module is where it will be. All these modules are loaded. I don't believe that PHP actually comes up in here at all. Okay, no. So I'm going to uh, look it up there to see what actually needs to be put in. There are installation steps PHP provides you with, but uh, hopefully I can make it simple. Just looking for the line load module right here. HP 5 should be 7 and then we want the path to the module in PHP it's a DLL file in Windows PHP 7 there it is and we are using the 2.4 version of Apache so that's correct make sure yeah okay so then that will go and you can see they even used our, our scheme where it says C colon uh, PHP directory in the DLL there now save it I'm in a virtual machine I keep using the wrong control PHP 7 yeah. oh my uh, my numeric Lock. There it goes. So that should bring us PHP there. And then you want this. The path to PHP dot I and I. And I, I put them at the end, anything associated with PHP typically, I put at the end. We want also, if, you, if you're if you in a production environment, you could use the php.ini production. And if you want the development version, I'm just going to choose development. And actually, I'm going to leave that intact. So I'm going to copy it and then rename it. So it won't be development. It will be the actual php.ini. PHP requires the ini file to, to work properly. Maybe even to work at all. And I'm not showing the extensions, the file extensions, so I'm going to do that now. There. And you can see the extensions. So that's php.ini. Uh, there are a lot of different configurations in there that we're just not going to get into right now. Just thinking what else might we might need to do. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a PHP page just to test it out. So we go into our HT docs, and I didn't mention this before, but in your Apache folder, your HT docs is where all of your website files are stored. Uh, of course, you can make it anything, and then you have to go in and you have to change your configurations. Also, one of the things we didn't do yet is restart the Apache service. Every time you update your configuration file for Apache, you have to restart the service. But let's go ahead and create a PHP file because that will determine whether or not PHP is actually working on the web server. Because we want the web server to, to process and parse PHP files. So one of the things I like to do is create a PHP info file. And we're going to edit it with just notepad and obviously if you're doing a real program you're not going to want to use notepad that came with windows but we're just going to use it for now and uh, hope uh, PHP is certainly a computer language a programming language and if 
if you don't know it, uh, there are plenty of tutorials available. I'm just not teaching it right now. So I saved it. Now, after I restart the Apache service, if configurations are correct, I should be able to see that page. And you'll be able to see what it looks like if you don't already know. So I'm restarting the service. And if there are any issues in the configuration file, they're, they're, uh, the service won't even start back up. So again, I go to HTTP. Or actually, no, I don't even probably have to do that now. All I have to do is type in localhost because it's already been registered with the web browser. Then I go to phpinfo.php because everything in that folder is the root of localhost. And nothing. We get nothing. Except it's not responding <laughs> for, for some reason. Probably because I did that. All right, so I saw an ad handler in here in the documentation right here. Actually, that's probably what I missed. Uh, no, not that, this one. Go to the very end and I go actually up here and I paste it in. Now I saved it. Now, okay, so that was updating the configuration. Now I need to restart the service. If you update, if you update the website files, you won't have to restart the service. You update the file and then go with it. Just refresh the page. But I had to restart the service because I updated the configuration. There it goes. Perfect. That's what I love to see is to be able to solve problems, get websites up and running, uh, get everything working in harmony, and then we throw a party. So that's pretty much all there is. And <laughs> I say all there is. Okay, I'm not. I don't want to make it sound too simplistic. I've been doing this for a while, so yeah, you're gonna have issues down the road at some point or another. But again, there are, there is something called the WAMP, W-A-M-P, uh, software package where the, it contains all three packages. It contains Apache, PHP, and the MySQL database server all in one in one nice Windows installation package. It is an option. And I have used uh, something called LAMP for Linux, something called WAMP, and then something called XAMP or XAMP, I guess you would call it, where you, you do get the functionality of being able to install these packages all at once. Uh, sometimes it's more difficult to manage. It just depends on what you're trying to do or what you want to do with it. So we can change now anything in this, in this, uh, let's see, let's start with the basic hello world. <laughs> so anything in this book, because I want to show you that you don't have to actually update services when you're creating web pages. So that's your PHP. This is, oh, I don't know, just something that would not actually be in practice, but um, then you can say something like, hi there. So, and we update this page, and then we refresh. There it goes, hello world and hi there, both in HTML and PHP programming. Well, that's, that's about it. I'm Cody from Tulsa, Oklahoma, showing you how to install PHP on Windows 10 and getting it to function properly. You can contact me via Facebook at the Geeks Are Here page. Also, Tech Distress, T-E-C-H-D-I-S-T-R-E-S-S, -S, 